1957, the year our home, the Northern Lakes, almost became a distant memory. How the rolling hills and postcard landscapes were almost stolen from our generation and those to come after. The specks of the dust that came out of those chimneys still in the sediments of lakes to this day and will be there forever. Everyone knows the story of Chernobyl, but not everyone knows we almost had a similar event just like it on the northwest coast of England. A nuclear power plant, once known as Windscale, had a major disaster in October of 1957 that almost changed the course of British history forever. The Windscale fire consumed 8 tonnes of uranium and took 140 men 30 hours using over 2 million gallons of water in order to cool the burning core. Although this fire was a major incident at the time, it was actually an angel in disguise as the investigations that were conducted as a result of the fires uncovered the ugly hidden truths that were part of a much larger cover-up and if left uncovered would have undoubtedly led to the end of Cumbria. I took home a gag counter that the electronics department in the research and development department had just, just recently made and uh, I ran it over the lawn and I was amazed to discover that uh, the places where the activity was quite enormous and uh, one of these uh, spots I dug up, I took it in the kitchen, put it on the bench, cut it, uh, cut it in half and then discovered which half had the activity in it and continued in this way till I eventually came down to a single particle which uh, looked to me like uranium oxide. No one knows the length of time that uranium particles were raining down across the northwest of England, but it is estimated that it had been happening for four years prior to the Windscale fires. This is why the Windscale disaster may have been a saving grace that put an end to the constant spread of waste uranium pouring down across the Northern Lake District. Yes, that was quite astonishing because uh, every few yards there were very high increases. The uh, microphone on the guy counter really just sort of uh, hummed. Dr. Leslie decided to share his discovery with a colleague who lived down the road in Seascale. He took his Geiger counter with him. Dr. Jaden didn't live far away, and uh, I thought it would be interesting to see whether his garden was much the same, and uh, so I went over to see him. So I said, what's all this about? And he said that he'd uh, just been monitoring his own garden and found some high spots of activity. So I sort of said, well, you know, let's go out, and so we went into our garden. Uh, sure enough, uh, every uh, few yards, uh, there, there was a high reading, the meter uh, reading went right up to the top. And, uh, this was quite alarming and we came back into the house, quite a few spots in the house and even in our larder. Just try to imagine for a moment that you are going about your daily routine, going to work, spending time with your family, but you have no idea about the sinister reality that is all around you in your food, on your clothes, and even in your garden. Waste plutonium slowly irradiating everything around you. And the worst part is, a number of people at one scale knew it was happening, yet did nothing about it. These highly radiated particles were escaping out the back of a faulty car. When a capsule was spent, they were discarded and pushed out the back into a skip filled with water. It was this water that prevented the spent capsules from releasing any radiated particles into the atmosphere and out of the chimneys. Some of these spent cartridges got caught in the air vents at the back of the core where they were free to break down and release up into the huge chimneys above. When the chimneys were originally built, they had no filtration system on them. Before the plant went live, one man named John Cockroft had to convince the site managers to install the filters like you see here. 
This cost a lot of money and time to install these filters as the construction was already completed and so the workers named them Cockroft's Follies. Follies is derived from middle-aged English to mean stupid or foolish. In an alternative world, John may have been ignored and Cumbria may never have survived without the filters stopping the majority of the fallout from ever escaping the chimneys. Whilst all of this was going on, without the country knowing the biggest disaster in British history was on the verge of becoming a reality. The core in Reactor 1 was beginning to have trouble releasing the energy it generated whilst under load. The chief engineer on site decided that in order to release the energy from the cores, they needed to heat it up to trigger reaction that would release the energy it had stored up. They turned the cooling fans off and let the reaction take place. This was a routine task, but was never a documented process and was always eyeballed in to turn the fans back on at the exact right time. Unfortunately, on the 10th of October, they got this very wrong and it started huge fires in Reactor 1. The engineers immediately panicked and turned the fans back on thinking this would extinguish the flames. Little did they know, at the time, this was making the situation much, much worse, and the fires continued to roar. The first thought was to blow the uh, flames out by putting on the full blowers and uh, increasing the cooling. Uh, in retrospect, that was not a very good idea, and we soon learnt that uh, this was uh, making matters worse rather than better. Tom Hughes, who was second in command to the reactor manager, suggested that he would personally go and look down the reactor core himself to be able to best gauge what to do. I'm not sure how Tom managed to get his gigantic balls to work that day, but I'm glad he did, because staring a reactor core straight down the barrel must be like facing death itself. Although Tom was exposed to high levels of radiation, it wasn't enough to permanently affect him, and we actually have footage here of Tom's recollection of the event. By this time, it was a, you know, a blazing inferno. I mean, I did stand to one side for part of the time, you know, hopefully, but inevitably, if you're looking straight into the core of a shutdown reactor, you're going to get quite a lot of radiation. I asked for water at 40 pounds pressure, and I listened. No noise, so then I asked for 60, then 80, then 120, which was full pressure. No noise. The worry, of course, was if the water produced hydrogen, the whole lot could have gone, gone up. <laughs> and uh, it, at that moment, it wasn't a very pleasant situation. When I went back up to the reactor, the holes that I was looking down at the back had steel plates on them. They didn't have the plugs in them. And there was a hole in these plates and you could lift off the plate with a hook, a metal hook. I tried to pull up the plate on one of these holes and no matter how hard I pulled, I couldn't move it. And this was the fire trying to suck air in from wherever it could. I've known that it was even sucking air in down through the chimney at this stage to try and maintain itself. Well, eventually, I got this plate off so that I could look down at the back of the reactor once more. And I could almost see the fire dying away. It was really dramatic. First of all, the flames went and the flames reduced and then the, the glow began to die down. And I inspected it oh, a number of times uh, up until about midday when I couldn't see any sign of any fire, any glow, anything. And I was satisfied that the fire was out. Well, Tom, I'm glad that you were around that day, and I would personally thank you if I could for preventing this mega disaster from happening in, in this region. My YouTube channel was created from the inspiration that the Lake District has given me, and I can't imagine an alternative reality where that doesn't exist. In fact, without the actions of Tom, 
and the unwillingness to back down of John Cockroft's decision to put a filter in, none of us may have ever had the life we live here in the north of the UK. So the next time you're up one of the Wainwright Fells taking in the surrounding views, just take a moment to think about how very different it could have been.